no force in the universe can contain the power and the fury of Rock Lord. More than me, the Transformers. Kells here. We are in the Dragon's Lair. Deepest Sheffield. D.A. Kane. Slimehouse TV inside the place. You're an obsessive battle rapping racist, constantly scared that he might lose a death threat receiving reclaim that never leaves his room. I do collect toys, that's just a reflection of my youth to make sure that I never end up becoming something that resembles anything like you! What are you saying? Just in the toy room, just showing the boys some of the old childhood memories. <laughs> I'm looking around here thinking, yeah that was, yeah I was eight, yeah and I was nine. You know, I, and I, I don't know, I've thrown a couple of things, I'm like, have you got the original Blood Bowl? Yes, he's got it. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yo, let's take a look around this, this is some serious shit, Dio's gonna give us a guided tour. Right, so let's start from over here, my brother. These are all Toxic Crusaders by Flamemates. Right. Yeah, have I ever heard of, um, like, Trauma and Toxic Avenger and that kind of thing? Yeah. It's like, well, he, this, that, that's actually like an R-rated movie, the, uh, the Toxic Avenger. Right. And then for some reason in the 90s they got the license to do a kid's toy line of it and a kid's cartoon. So they made the Toxic Avenger into Toxic with the Toxic Crusaders. Jumping on all like the Ninja Turtles hype of like a mutant team of dudes that fought baddies. Right, yeah. These yeah. are one of my favourites, Power Lords. They're like by a, a, a dope artist that I like, uh, Wayne Barlow. He, he's a sick artist of creating mad like concept aliens and he got a license to create some toys in the 80s. Another really obscure line and they're almost like ceramic to feel and they're so cheap that they do fucking break so like trying to get them in good condition is is mental. It's it's like, yeah it's not it's not easy to uh, it's not easy to get. I love these ones. I just did this as a t-shirt design actually. Like, these are food fighters. Oh I remember these. I used to have loads of these food fighter things. It's wrapped up so I just bought this one. These are t-shirts I released you can see in there. It's the donut man. Yo the donut um, shooting a gun like Rambo. I remember the paint, this guy. And the, and the trolley. Yeah, I remember all of these dudes. Just all that vibe in it, all yeah. that colourful, toxic, neon like dog, funky vibe. But why why so obscure though? Just because that, what, why do I like obscure yeah. stuff? Just because I like it all, but they're the ones that you don't see all the time. Do you know, so like, it's the ones you don't see all the time. It's like a cult movie, isn't it? It's like, you can you can watch the Warriors a thousand times and then I'm, and then and then at this point I'm like I've watched the Warriors a thousand times and I'm 21 so then I start looking oh, I want to look at some rip, like other stuff like it and you get down a rabbit hole and find the like Italian knockoff rip off Warriors movies like <laughs> Bronx Warriors and shit and mm. it's like just as dope not as big budget made a bit more cheap but crazy inventive shit going on like. This is like one of my favourites ever. And the director Enzo G. Castellari gets like really offended when people say it's a Warriors ripoff, but it's obviously inspired by that shit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And they get a bit like Rambo and things and and they would paint these covers without really even seeing much of the film so the dude doesn't really look like that he's not that ripped he doesn't have all these like wristbands and shit with like this mad crotch pad and his gun doesn't look like that there is dudes on horses with flamethrowers which is not in the warriors so he's, he, okay. it's like dope yeah, yeah, shit yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it's like what can we make what can we do that's more crazy than the warriors we want the horses one. So Blake, on a was a rip off of yeah, the, yeah. they were trying Fred to, uh, Williamson was in Lord, you'll know this guy, he's like a legend, black exploitation yeah, legend. Yeah. Like he uh, he's in it and this is this is one of one of my favourites. So I like really I like cool things. They're obviously all taking inspiration from the main core stuff, the turtles, the ghostbusters, the, the transformers like the run about the rock wars earlier. Obviously Transformers came first, but then these are just like wacky fucking mad out there shit. So I just like things that are not not like oh, everyday shit. There was a thing on TV before like the 100 greatest toys on Channel 4 and like he went through it and it was all just the main stuff you'd expect yeah. and I'm like where's all the fucking obscure shit yeah. like that, that's great and there's greatness in there. Great, it's art, I mean it's all art to me. Art, whether it's graph, music, filmmaking, toy making, designing, sculpting, it's all just different art and You'll see I've got loads of like vintage like um, cans of soda and things because I just like the colour palettes and the logos mm. and the certain things. I, I like to basically see greatness and colour and art in things that people would just throw away or like not really think of. Yes. So f f let me just grab one. So for example, like this is like a, a fake He-Man, a fake Motu. See the body is like very similar to a to an actual He-Man, but it's uh, it's like a knockoff. But these are the ones that's like highly collectible now. Motu are always collectible, but them ones are more um, the ones that's like more sought after now. The ones that go for for big big money. Some of them go for like hundreds and hundreds of pounds, as opposed to like one that goes for like thirty quid, like a He-Man. But even like I was raised on car books and market stalls, and even like. 20 years ago when I was a kid, my dad would be like, oh, leave them ones there, the Nesbitt ones, they're not mm. worth anything. So get the, uh, 
we, we buy the good He-Man and leave the Nesbit ones, but ironically now they're the ones that's worth money. Mad. That look like fake bootleg He-Man shit. That's the stuff that's like so highly sought after now for like the, the cheap quick airbrush artwork. It's dope, but it's, it's not as dope as He-Man, but it's like dope in its own way. It's got like its own vibe. There's a lot of these like Japanese or particular Oh, I've got a lot of Japanese downstairs. These are all Japanese, these Bandai's, but they're, they're new, they're not old figures. They're new stuff. But in Japan, these are like a five or six quid each, so I just, I always grab them when I win, because I just think they're cool. So this is a toy that I designed. This is a Deflatron, and this is all made in a Chinese factory. And I designed the whole thing. It's based on an old toy called the Deathlo, which is like a real, no, like the fake He-Man I was showing you earlier. Mm. There's ones that came out with glitter in the chests mm -hmm. in the in the 80s called the Speclatron and they're like so fucking rare to get. So I made this as like a, a throwback to that. So he's got like the glitter chest. He looks like that, but a He-Man version. So I like redid him as like a proper evil toxic monster and then I designed all this like transparent armor that goes on him. Nice. This was with a company called Lima Studios. I, I work with pretty closely. So I've designed the whole toy, and then I've also painted all the backing art and this, which is also based on an old uh, Castle Grayskull mm -hmm. knockoff. And then I've got if you see a bit better there, and then like, these other ones in the line. That's over this company, Nina Studios. Which is like an independent record label, but toys, you know what I mean? Like, mm. like an independent record label will put out like indie albums and mm. stuff and, and stuff. So very much the same mentality, but just of designer toys. And there's a whole mad niche market just mm. for designer toys. People that almost, tri like if I re-release this and it's like a limited to a hundred, it's the equivalent of an artist releasing like a hundred limited prints. Like people will start bidding high for, even though it's a print, it's not the original painting, like, cause it's limited. And people buy, they don't buy that for the kid. They buy that as like a designer toy piece. Wow. The designer and there's loads of those in japan like there's like really like high up toy designers and stuff like, just to make a mold for these is like 15 grand what? just to make the mold for it i hope you enjoyed passing through the toy room today and checking out my house shouts to killer keller and to danny cans for passing through make sure you check out all the keller vision videos because there's some awesome stuff on there and if you like retro toys and a bit of street culture you can check out my youtube at youtube.com forward slash slime house tv you can also get at me on instagram at theo underscore kane underscore slime house tons of cool content there again mad shouts to killer keller and danny cans shouts to all the graffiti kings and uh, have a good christmas peace